Thank you for checking out this no spoilers review of the Ari Aster film from 2019. Yes, right now, uh, Midsummer. Uh, yes, I just saw this film literally less than an hour ago. I got out of the theater. I apologize up front. I may sound a little bit out of the breath. My face might be a little bit red because I was outside. I had to take care of some manual labor-ish stuff before doing this. But I wanted to get this as soon as possible. Um, I say this is no spoilers. It's um, There might be some light thematic spoilers in a sense. It's not going to spoil anything that like actually happens in the film. There's a little bit of theme that I'm going to talk about. So um, just, I guess, be a little bit cautious. But anyway... Um, I will say I was a fan of Hereditary. I saw it in the theater when I first saw it. I know when I was done in the theater, I heard a lot of people standing up saying, well, that sucked. I liked it. Uh, Ari Aster, the way he makes films, it's a thinking person's film. So I know there are people when they check out horror, they just want straight up horror. They want everything just like there in your face, like something like slashers. Slashers are usually just... It's face value. It's what's going on. What you see on the screen is what's going on. There's no deeper meaning. You don't have to piece things together. With, like, Hereditary, you really had to piece a bunch of stuff together, and there were a lot of, you know, extra themes for people to kind of figure out. And uh, Midsummer is the same way. That is the type of filmmaker that Ari Aster is. It is confirmed uh, with a second film. Because sometimes, you know, the first film they do it one way, then after that they're going to do it differently. I don't know. But Midsummer is that way. I understand why people don't like it. Uh, I really did enjoy it for probably some of the reasons people didn't really like it. It's not a typical horror film. In addition to having themes that you really need to think about, uh, it stands at odds with a lot of typical horror things. Like, for one, uh, usually horror films are in the dark, or a lot of portions of, of the ter terrific or terrifying things or, ter or disturbing or disgusting things are in the dark. With this film, um, it's almost all in the light, and the terrible stuff happens in the sun. And it looks beautiful, and it looks amazing. The other thing is, music a lot of the times will give you, um, you know, auditory cues of here's how you're supposed to feel. The, here's music that's horrific. Here's music that's uplifting and beautiful and awesome. And there's a clash in this film of that type of stuff. When there's some really horrible stuff going on, there's beautiful, amazing, just light, cheery music going on. And uh, at other times, there's that, you know, darker music. But but it's this kind of like horror trope clashing or, or typical horror stuff done clashing in, in Midsummer, And that's one of the things I really like about Ari Aster is... He's not just going to be like, oh, this is what you do with a horror film. He's going to do his own thing. So, um, more, if I have a criticism, two criticisms of this film, actually. One, there's some, there's some CGI in it, and there are a few moments, if you really look, where the CGI looks a little bit wonky, which I'm assuming is probably just because this is a film put out by, like, A24 Studios, and I don't really think that A24 has, like, a ton of money, so the budget for what he had to do was probably pretty tight. So, you know, whatever. The other thing is, I, I, I know some people have been complaining about the length of the film. It is over two hours. It's probably, like, about an hour and 20 or something, and then you throw trailers at the beginning of that, and you're in the theater for quite some time. Um, I do think it definitely could have been cut down it, it definitely could have been edited down probably should have been edited down I can't really say how much I'd probably have to watch it another time to get a good idea for that but um I I agree with people on that criticism with the film but for having watched it once it, it doesn't really kill me you know like I I can get over that it's fine plus with with how slowly it moves and it does move slowly that's another thing I think people probably don't like about it but I'm fine with that because I felt like it gave you more time to connect with the characters, more time to have the situation sink in. And I think that uh, with the directing style and the acting and the writing with it, it did a really good job of kind of keeping attention, like, oops, sorry, jostled you, keeping like a low level tension throughout it where what you're experiencing, you really don't know what's going to happen next because it's very, very foreign to you as an audience member. You're experiencing things that you've not experienced before, so you really don't know where things are going or what's going to happen. I did guess some of the stuff early on that would happen in the end, but I didn't know how you're going to get there, and you can't see everything coming. It's just not possible with this film. So I really liked how 
it keeps that tension of like anything could happen at any moment. So when things pop up, you're kind of like, oh, you know, there it is. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't know. So you just kind of have this feeling like something's going on. So they have these little moments where along with the characters, you kind of see things going wrong and you're just or, or see things are a little bit off. And you're just kind of like, oh, okay, now I know, mm, now I know it's going to get there. I know something's going to happen, but you just don't know when it's going to happen. And that's kind of nice. Um, thematically speaking, I think this film can play on two main levels. I think one, it works as a film about uh, terrible relationships, uh, relationships that you're in, that you're just kind of doing it because you feel like you should be doing it and not necessarily that you want to be in it or that it's actually a relationship for you and how that is. It's kind of the, the entire movie can be seen as like a metaphor for that terrible relationship where there are these moments where you're, you're going through and you, you see these little things that are just kind of like off and, and it makes you start to think like, Oh, you know, maybe I should get out of here. Maybe I should leave. But then something wonderful happens and it just kind of like pulls you right back in. And that happens in this film and so you just uh, kind of like brush off the thing that you saw that where you were just like, ooh, I don't know about this. Maybe I should be getting getting out of here. And then it also speaks to the destruction that can be caused of, you know, when these relationships go poorly. And it's not just the people in it. It's people around it. And in the end, you know, if you if you're able to get out of the relationship in whatever way or if the relationship ends or anything, there is catharsis. There's the ability to kind of look back and say, oh, you know, that wasn't for me. But when you're going through it, it's terrible. And I think it they hit in the film all the span of emotions and it keeps showing you this turmoil of. Oh, like, I feel like I should be in this relationship because there's this good thing and this good thing, but then there's this bad thing over here, but then, oh, I'm distracted. This person did this really nice thing over here that just kind of brings me back in. And people just tell me, like, I should be in a relationship and maybe this is where I'm supposed to be, but then there's this person over here that's, like, telling me that they kind of might want me. And so I think it plays very well as a whole metaphor for bad relationships, relationships you convince yourself to be in against your own will basically um the other way i think this works is way more controversial and that is from a religious aspect of uh people and their beliefs and whatever religion they they subscribe prescribe to of you know as as an audience member i will say watching this film you're experiencing kind of a religion in a sense a community a religion like they do things differently and to you, a lot of it's very confusing. It doesn't make sense. It's funny at times. It's terrifying at times. It's weird at times. It's very beautiful and peaceful at times. And that's kind of the audience, what you're experiencing through watching this film is kind of the experience that outsiders of a religion experience. You know, they're looking into it and they're not seeing what the people in it are seeing at the same time. And, but you also get the glimpses of, and some dialogue related to how the people in that religion, in that community feel about it and how they're just like, well, this is how it is. Like, this is just, and whenever you as an audience member are kind of questioning it and you're just like, Ooh, yeah, that doesn't seem right. Or that's not good. Or, uh, that they're just kind of like, well, I mean, this is how it is. And so it works on this level of, you know, showing you what religion is looks like from the outside and what it, what ins, insulated communities look like from the outside and feel like as well and i think it also kind of then focuses on this unless you're a believer of whatever religion or whatever you know beliefs or community then you look at it as crazy you look at it as this doesn't compute this is wrong this is messed up but when you're in it you do everything you can to um, make it look a certain way, to be as nice to, to other people as possible, to make it look enticing, and figure out a way to kind of pull people in or save people or however it's done within the religion. So I think it also plays that way. So I can see people, if they pick up on that, or if they feel the film kind of plays with that theme, that they would be very turned off because it's a very touchy subject. Me personally, I'm actually agnostic. I don't believe anything really. I, I just feel like I don't know what to believe. You know, I feel like most likely nothing is correct. Like no religions are right probability wise. So for me, it's kind of weird because watching this film, like the way I felt as an audience member watching it is kind of 
in a very pared down way, um, kind of how I feel looking at any religion because I don't have one. You know, my my set of beliefs and who I am is is very unique because it's just me basically. So you know, and to other people looking at me like that looks weird. That's that's very foreign. It doesn't make sense, and sometimes could probably feel very wrong. So yeah. So there we go. Um, I'm trying to think. The acting was really well handled in this. It looks beautiful. It really looks beautiful. And they really took their time. There are a lot of really nice wide shots. The The scenery is amazing there. The costuming was really well done. The directing is, is great. And so from like a technical standpoint, except for that little CGI issue, and from it being a bit too long, I think it's really well executed. The story, like I said, um, I see where a lot of people are not going to like that story, but I really liked it. There's some humor written in there to kind of give people reprieve from time to time, and that's really cool too. Like, it's hard to appropriately mix humor in, especially with a horror film, and I think it was done well. Um, so that's basically all I have to say about that, but I did want to tell people this little story. My buddy and I were, were watching it in the theater, and there was one couple in the theater with us and those were that was it for the for the amount of people seeing the film so i wish there were more people seeing the film but uh it was an, a very old couple and they were talking loudly during the film and it was actually pretty funny because there were things like is this movie supposed to be scary and the response was yeah i think at some point and then during you know one of the long stretches because it takes a while to get into the film like get things kind of like rolling uh, there was a question of, um, is this supposed to, or, um, oh, this is a lovely film. It's nothing like the write-up. And I'm like, well, it's, it's going to get there. If you read the write-up, it's going to get there, obviously. But it was just really funny. And then at the end, the, uh, the couple stopped by us and said, um, we're going to tell our kids to see this. But they were joking. They were being very sarcastic. And they were like, what did we watch? And I'm sure there were plenty of people who kind of felt that way. What did we watch? But... Uh, my buddy Jordan had said it at, at, when we were walking out, he's like, I feel like I want to watch every movie like that with an old couple and just hear that because it was pretty funny. Um, but anyway, yeah, just a little anecdote there. So anyway, I greatly di enjoyed this film. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But is it really good? In my opinion, yes. It's very good. I don't know if it's done in a way that warrants a rewatch for me. Or I like I, I liked enjoying enjoying it, and I think I can maybe watch it one more time. But I don't think it has a ton of rewatch value because it's mainly in the end, like like getting it at the end, figuring out what it's all about at the end. So I could probably watch it one more time to see if there were like certain things here and there that I missed or didn't miss. Um, and I will say, actually, there if you pay very close attention, there are, are a bunch of things that happen that really signal to you what is going to happen. You really need to be keen and look for it. And um, there's actually a very strong visual cue, if you keep that in your mind, that basically tells you the whole movie before you see it. And I'm, that's all I'm going to say about it. You might pick up on it. And then one other little thing. like I know that filmmakers like to put little nods to other films in their films and I think I think there was a nod to The Shining because there was a blanket at one point where someone has a pattern that looks very similar not color wise but just pat shapes wise a pattern similar to the carpet pattern in The Shining so maybe I'm wrong but that's what it looked like to me anyway I uh, would love to hear other people's opinions on this film put your comments down there did you like Midsummer? did you hate it how did you feel about um, the themes and everything? What did you pull out of it? Because, you know, maybe what I was saying themes-wise is totally wrong. I don't know. That's how, just how it played out to me. But please give me a subscribe if you like anything that I do. Pass the word along about this channel. And definitely those comments. I want to hear what you thought. Anyway, thank you for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.